Good morning. Grab a seat. This is the word of the Lord. If you're just joining us, we are in a very intense book of the Bible called Nehemiah. Nehemiah. And some of us, we look back and we're like, oh man, that's Old Testament. Uh, It's not important. It's not relevant for today, but you would be wrong. It's, I believe, exactly what the doctor ordered for our country, for our time, for our city, and for our church. If you look at, at, our, at our nation, there is so much in, in intensity and strife in it, in our world and even our country, with, with everything happening. I, I don't know about you, but, but I, I hope you haven't already forgotten what has happened in Las Vegas. Was, oh, you know, that was, no, I, I hope it's still fresh in your mind to pray for those and, and, and that, that, that were affected and to pray for our country, to pray um, for Las Vegas. Uh, you got Houston and Florida. I, I have a list up here dealt with massive water def- devastation. Uh, Houston, they're saying, is going to be for like the next year uh, or two, it's still recovering um, from what has happened to them. Uh, you got the Northwest in Canada uh, with massive fires, uh, the Caribbean islands hit by hurricanes, the Me- Mexico uh, earthquake killed hundreds, North Korea uh, poised to attack, and then the countless attacks of infighting that occur in our own country. So much division, so much strife. Uh, even in uh, entertainment, I want to share this. Uh, like, my, my wife and I uh, were, were watching a, a weekend update on SNL, and I haven't watched a weekend update in ages. And, uh, you know, I remember the day when, you know, they poke fun of Clinton poke fun of w, w, George W. Bush and uh, it's like, oh, okay, I can, I can laugh at that. You know, that's, you know, that's, that's just, just light, light humor, you know. And, uh, and again, I'm not, I'm, I'm really not making a political statement. I'm making a biblical one that we are to honor our, our leaders. I almost wanted to go throw up when, when I saw what I saw, uh, just the, not humor, but hatred in the name of humor towards, towards our president, towards our leaders. I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm not saying anything positive of our president or anything negative. I'm just saying, what does it say in Romans 13? Uh, that we are to be subject to our governing officials. We are to pray for them and to have a heart that's yielding and respectful, even when we don't agree uh, at times. Now, I'd love for him to stop tweeting. Okay, I w- let's all agree on that. Uh, but uh, he just gets himself in trouble that way. But uh, we need to pray uh, for our, our president, for our leaders. Um, I know that's not popular to say that these days. I don't care if it's popular or not. Uh, it, with God, it is, it is important that, that we respect what our troops have done for our country, respect the policemen that fight um, uh, for our freedom, respect the, 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 the racial tension that's happening in our, in our country, and, and pray for Christ to come home, uh, to bring us home. <laughs> um, so anyways, I just, I, I think, what a time is this for Nehemiah uh, that dealt with, with this kind of intensity. Um, and, and I love it. This is, this is a book about hope. This is a book about leadership. This is a book about comfort. And, and especially, it is, a, is, it is a book that motivates mere fans of Jesus to truly be followers of Jesus. Amen? We need this. I, I believe the most dangerous person in this world is not an atheist. I want you to write down this quote, okay? The most, uh, the most dangerous person in this world is not an atheist, but an inauthentic Christian. Did you hear that? The most dangerous person is not an atheist, but an inauthentic Christian. And so don't be a fan any longer. And, and God could weed out some of you, you know, where you're just like, you know what, I'm gonna go find a church that's more suited for me, that has some Kool-Aid for me, and, you know, it's just more, you know, uh, the baptismal's a hot tub, you know, that kind of, actually, that would be kind of nice, but, you know, you know just kind of that comfortable Christianity, um, we, we, I, I don't see that in Nehemiah. Uh, in fact, uh, it's, I, I love this, I mean, he, God, God chose this unlikely lowly servant in Susa, Okay, uh, and he's got a blue collar job and he gets a white collar job. He becomes the, the governor of, uh, of, of, of Jerusalem ultimately. But you know what I love about it? He doesn't like roll in, you know, he's got his secretary and his office and his nice desk and all that. Uh, and, and like, oh, I got a white collar job. So now I can just, you know, sit back. He rolls up his sleeves 
and, and, he's, and, he, and he's got a blue collar mentality, even though he has a white collar job. And I hope that, that that's my prayer for this church, that we would be a blue collar church that isn't afraid to roll up our sleeves and, and, and get in the trenches and get dirty <laughs> um, for, for the cause of Christ. Amen? Man, amen? <laughs> okay. So, um, w- one of the things we notice, Nehemiah uh, just gets to see God move people from ruins to restoration. It's beautiful. Uh, th- th- there's a, a story happening in Jerusalem, and the bigger story that God has in mind informs the smaller story. Uh, and, and that's encouraging. That's got to be encouraging for us that the bigger story we find ourselves in that is this ultimately about Jesus leading us from ruins to restoration, that, sh- that brings hope to us, that brings peace to us. Now, you guys need to know this, that, that people, uh, other, other Nehemiah-type people had spent years trying to rebuild Jerusalem and had failed over and over again. They had failed. And yet with Nehemiah, there's success. Here's what it reminds us, Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, the watchman stays awake in in vain. I heard one pastor say this, like, oh, I planted a church. It grew to like 2,000 people. I go to another city, I plant a church, and it stays at like 20 or 200 or whatever. And he's like, what happened? I thought I was the man. No, <laughs> right? Like, like let, let me just remind you of something. Like Jonah was a jerk. We could just say that. I mean, he would, he would go, yeah, I was. I, I, wanted, I literally wanted Nineveh to just perish. Those, those, those pagan fish followers, you know, like their, their God was fish. I, I like fish. I, I could find myself, you know, like jiving with those guys probably. Jonah, no, wants him to die. He's like, I got, I got swallowed by a fish. You worship a fish. Are you kidding me? And, and he literally hate, hates the people. He literally like wants God. To, he wants them. He preaches. And then he's like, please don't repent. I mean, can you imagine if I preached? I'm like, don't come forward. Just stay where you are. I really hope you stay an atheist. I mean, can you imagine? And they, by the droves, repent. And then you got Jeremiah, a stud. He's the man. He's faithful. Zero converts. Zero converts. But he was faithful. The key is faithfulness. You know, and, and I've heard somebody say, hey, this started in your living room. You, you should go and just, I mean, yeah, you're the man. And I'm like, no, actually, I could write the book on what not to do in church planning. I've made like, every mistake in the book. But God is faithful. When I'm faithless, he's faithful. And so, uh, again, I love Psalm 127. I mean, people have tried to build the house. They've tried to, to help the, the ruins. They've tried to bring life to it. Fail, fail. And it's not them. It's, who's, who's, it's God. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who labor, labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. Again, the difference is not that Nehemiah is a better leader but it's that God is behind him with power. And so this is very important. In our context, um, I mean, we, we look at this and we're like, well, wait a minute. Does that mean that maybe I'm not the pastor of my home, that maybe I'm not called to make disciples? Oh no, I need to pray about that. No, if you believe that you are blood-bought, Okay, that you believe in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, that he's washed away your sin, he's your Lord, and he truly is your Savior, then you have been called, you have been equipped, you have been empowered to make disciples that make disciples. Does that get you excited? You don't have to think about it and wonder. It's like, man, we can, that's prescribed, that's prescriptive for our generation. We know that we are empowered. We know we're on the other side of the resurrection. We have hope. We have power in Jesus Christ. We have the ability to have the eyes of our hearts enlightened, that we can hear the cries of our city. Nehemiah heard the cries of our city today. We have a better Nehemiah. We have Jesus Christ, who's our king. He indwells in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the capability, uh, and we're culpable, to, to hear the cries of our city. We need to let the cry um, go to our heart and, w- and that's where we seek God's power and his plan and his people to be utilized for restoration. Chapter five of Nehemiah is just plain 
crazy. Super gnarly book, uh, super gnarly chapter when it says in verse one that there's an outcry. Something should have stood out to you, guys. Something should have stood out to you. I know it's not on Facebook or Twitter, like what happened to Nehemiah's day, but I, I mean, like sometimes it's like, oh, I don't know if it happened in our nation unless it's on Facebook, you know? Like, are we in God's book? Are we seeing what's going on? And uh, it, it, this is very serious. Uh, the, the wives cry out. That has my attention. Men, I want to talk to you for a second. Men, have you been in an awkward confrontation with another dude and your wife's right there? Hmm? You know what I'm talking about? It just got really quiet. I thought you guys would jive with me. Just like, he's going to go there. Yeah. You know, and your wife is just like ready to go, Xena, warrior princess on the dude that's, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you know it's bad if your wife steps in. She's just like, you know what? No, you did not. You did not. I can't even. I just, what? I just, like, you know it's bad. Um, and we're, we're in a time period, in an era where, I mean, we can be honest, chauvinistic at the time, like, like women, um, I mean, we're, we're, a lot of them dealt with suppression. Not always. There, I mean, there's some biblical encounters where like they, they, they let women really um, uh, um, work together in, in a complementary way that, as it should be. Uh, like you see Aquila and Priscilla discipling together in the early church. But just generally in this time period, women weren't brought to the city council. Women weren't, uh, you know, you, you didn't hear them talking and it's, they, they go to the city gate, and, which is like the city council, and they're, they're saying something. You know it's bad, right? You, you know it's bad. I mean, we can joke today with like, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy, but I, it's true though, right? I mean, uh, but the outcry here is, is, a, is very devastating. It's very serious. The women are saying something I mean, this is a very ser serious situation. Their, their kids are, are starving to death. There's a serious outcry. My thoughts are immediately transported to Exodus, the story that Moses dealt with. Uh, I want to remind you, go to Exodus, Exodus 2 and verse 23. You can see it on the Sky Bible. Uh, years passed and the king of Egypt died, but the Israelites continued to groan under their burden of slavery. They cried out for help. I want to ask you, are you faithful to cry out for help? Or are you faithful just to whine? Worship, worship, not whining, but worship is crying out to God for help. Crying out, I mean, when we lift our hands, it's my, I, I love it. It's not like, oh, look at me, I'm, I'm a religious elite, elite, you know? It's like, no, I'm like a toddler that needs to be picked up. Daddy, pick me up, right? You see your little toddler walk around, uh, I mean, that, that's the kind of posture we should be in. Uh, the people in Exodus, uh, the people in Moses' day are crying out to God. They're in a posture of, Lord, help me. In Nehemiah's day, they're crying out uh, comparatively, actually in the same way, in a lot of ways. The outcry is about slavery. I mean, did any of you, did your ears perk up when you, when you heard the word slavery? When other men own homes, when other men own your kids? And they're actually supposedly family. So this is very, what Nehemiah is dealing with is similar to what, what uh, Moses is dealing with. But actually you go, oh, it's not as bad. Because like in Moses' day, like, I mean, wherever you could see a Jew, a, a Hebrew, they were enslaved. Like they were getting their backs just whipped and, and just to, to build pyramids, I mean, to, to be slaves. And you're like, oh, it's not as bad. It's not as bad. And in one regard, that's, that's true, but in the other, it's actually worse because this is not like another country enslaving you. This is your own flesh and blood. Own flesh and blood. I mean, that, I, I love babysitting. You know, we, we try to babysit nephews and, you know, and nieces, and we, we've had some of them over for sleepovers and stuff. But let, I mean, can you just imagine like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna keep them. Let me just hang on to them. And actually, oh, did you have fun at uh, Uncle Josh's house and Aunt Laura? Um, mm, I, they made me mow the lawn. They made me use my toothbrush to clean the toilets, you know? 
I'm not ready to cook. You know, I'm not ready to, but I guess I am. You know, um, that, that's, that's, we can joke about that, but I mean, like, that is what is not laughable. That's what is happening in this time period. Uh, there's crazy interest being attached to loans. At first blush, you're like, oh, that's nice. Brother is giving a loan to another brother. That's, that's a great thing. Deuteronomy 23, 19, look at this. Do not charge interest on the loans you make to a fellow Israelite, whether you loan money or food or anything else. And yet this is exactly what's happening on steroids. On steroids. I mean, it's just, they're, they're not just like, well, you know what, I'm gonna charge you 3% interest or 4% interest. We're, we're gonna charge you like 50% or something. I mean, it's so bad and it's like, okay, we're, we need to sell the house for a loaf of bread kind of thing. I mean, just very, very serious. Something I wanted to share, I thought about sharing this. The, the, um, we have a loan through a Christian organization. It's, it's very low, and they were very upfront with us. All of the money in the interest of this loan goes to mission and ministry. Just so you understand, I was just like, wow, that's awesome. I, I can get behind something like that instead of a secular bank getting our interest. And, you know. So I just, just want you guys to know, and I, I've been very upfront for years. We've we had a loan for about four years now, always been upfront. There, we have no secrets, but I, th I think it's important to, to hit on that. It sort of applies, but, but anyways, isn't that great? It's very low interest. I think it's like 4.5% and it goes to missions and ministry. Can we praise God? Isn't that good? Yeah, amen. So thankful, so thankful. Um, but this situation is very, very ugly. I mean, Moses' situation with slavery, very ugly. This one, uh, I, I think some of the, uh, you know how you, we can deceive ourselves? We're like, oh, well, no, that's not happening. I mean, it's not like we're Egyptians, you know, doing this to the, you know, we're not that bad. We're not making them build pyramids. And sometimes we can do that with our sin where we, we justify, oh, no, it's not that bad. It, you know, we, we, let the Lord speak to your heart right now. What is it in your life? that you're kind of justifying, like some of these nobles, some of these, these rich Jewish men, that they're like, oh, it's not that bad. What is it that, that is actually bad? The, the Lord is gonna confront you. The Holy Spirit with his word is gonna confront you. I know you woke up this morning, maybe not going, man, I'm gonna show up and get, get punched today or get some cold water on the face today, but the Lord wants to confront you and praise God that he wants to discipline you rather than destroy you. He, he loves those he disciplines. It's a, it's a great thing. We should uh, be thankful for it because it brings change. Another big connecting point, again, with Moses and Nehemiah is Nehemiah carries on Moses' promise of restoration, but on the other side of the Exodus. If you think about Exodus or escape or exit, that's where, you know, Exodus is kind of a, a church word, but it means like an, an escape, like a, a great exit. Um, the, the goal was freedom, was freedom and food. The two Fs, they wanted freedom and they wanted food. They, they, they were hungry. I want to ask you, do you, are you hungry this morning? Because Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. Do you have an appetite for him? These people are groaning, they're needy, and they're on the edge of their seat praying and crying out to the God, uh, our God. Are you on the edge of your seat hungry with an appetite of like, oh my goodness, I need this. I even in my, I know we were over with the parenting series. So yeah, we don't need to talk about parenting because we already graduated from that. But uh, I haven't, okay, I have not graduated. I, I need help. I'm at the feet of Jesus as a parent. Uh, we have four children, right? And, and there's times in my parenting where I'm like, kids, daddy needs the Bible right now. Anyone else, can anyone else do that? You literally go, daddy needs the Bible. And, and uh, you can just see the kids you can just see that, I mean, they don't like smile, like, yeah, yeah. But you can just, especially the nine-year-old, he's just like, you know, he keeps that face. Hmm. You know, like, don't make eye contact with daddy, you know. But you can just see the comfort over his face, like, oh, daddy's hungry for the word. Dad, this is, we're going we're gonna to see daddy get refreshed. We're going to see daddy put back on track. 
our proclivity and propensity is to be hungry for the world, to, to parent out of the law. You will obey. You will listen to daddy and mommy. You will go to sleep or I will put you to sleep. Yeah, I mean, you know, that kind of, tease. I would never say that. You know, but that is, did that just come out, honey? It did, it did. Just, just kind of came out. Ben Stiller came out right there. Okay, I was quoting him. Anyways, just for the record, uh, uh, we're, we're, we, our propensity is the law. Our propensity is I am hungry for you to listen to me instead of like, Jesus, help me. Humble me, soften my heart. We need him. Um, and, and these people are hungry. Nehemiah 5 and verse 2, for there were those who said with our sons and our daughters, we are many. So let us get grain that we may eat and keep alive. Notice these people don't do any Facebook slamming. You know, they don't Twitter. They don't tweet about it. I mean, they, they don't like, well, this person and this political issue and this and that. It's just like, uh, no, our kids are hungry. There's not like, hey, these jerks, that, these greedy jerks that are taking, you know, it's just like, no, our kids are hungry. They get right to it. I mean, they get, I mean, that's like what they lead out with. Um, and, and then Nehemiah is asking more questions. Nehemiah, and he's like, what, these nobles are doing? This? Wait, what is going on? And he confronts, he confronts. I would admit to you, there, in our city, there are those that are not getting their basic needs met. And you're like, well, no, it's, it's, it's fairly good. It's not, you know, we got Union Gospel Mission, we got Bite to Go. Bite to Go is a ministry that we, we support as well, uh, where we, you know, kids, like Sunset View, they'll get like free and reduced lunches, breakfasts, but then they'll go home and not get dinner. And some of us were like, well, you know, two meals are you know, better than none. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Bite to Go is a great ministry that helps kids actually have, have be able to bring home dinner. Uh, it's a great thing. And um, I... But, but I ho hope we can also teach some of these people to fish and not just give them fish. And sometimes you'll get people that are swindlers. They'll, they'll walk into the church. I usually send them to Bruce. But uh, anyways, um, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. But um, not always. Bruce is amazing. He's very gifted. He'll work with, with some of those people that will come in. And at first, I'm just like, oh, we got to help this person. This is great. And then Bruce is like, actually, they're on drugs. And actually, they they, they I, I was going to drive them to the Union Gospel Mission. I was literally going to, and they said, no, they just want money. I was like, okay. I heard another person when I was preaching in jail on Thursday, uh, he, he's like, I will, if someone wants money, I will take them to the store, buy the food, hand it to them, you know, instead of like, oh, here's, here's just money. And so there's some other, there's some, some ways. But what we need to not do is go, oh, well, they're, they're all, you know, they're all manipulators. They're all liars. But what, what were you before you met Jesus? We well, were a sinner. You're an enemy of God. I want to share with you, I was doing some late night shopping. we just gotten back into town and uh, went to the supermarket. I'm not going to say the name of the supermarket, but um, cannot find the, the salami. It's like a dry, dry, hard salami. I was like, you know, where do you find the salami in this? in this uh, the store, I could not find it. And I, I'm looking for help, I cannot find help. I see these two, these two men, and uh, I'm, I come up to them, and I'm like, hey, do you know where the salami's at? And they turn around, and they look at me like I just said, like, hey, where's my spaceship at? It's like, it's like. And so, no, it's over here. So when I come, that's why I'm not saying the name of the supermarket. I, I really want to, okay, I'm not gonna do it. I, I come over. Come on, don't guess. Stop it. I know you're doing it right now. You're like, oh, I know. <laughs> okay, so we go over to the meat aisle, and uh, it, it, was, it was very comical because I'm like, yeah, I, I'm looking for the salami, and I point right at it. It's like right, I'm just, salami. And, and I go, oh, would you believe it? It's right next to the pepperoni, and <laughs> there's bacon. Uh, and he, uh, the, the gentleman's name was Omar, very, very sweet guy. He had an accent and stuff. I said, oh, where, where are you from? And he says, Somalia. And uh, I was like, oh, wow. How long have you been here? And he'd not been here very long. We start talking. I was like, man, I have a heart. I'm a Christian pastor. I really have a heart. Uh, our church has a heart for refugees and 
you know, I, I don't know if, you know, your situation, you know, but you could just see the, the love and it's like, wow, you actually care. And then he starts asking, like, it seemed like, oh, he's interested, but he was like, no, can you, what is salami again? Okay, you know, uh, and so I'm, I'm talking to him about like, you know, the ingredients and like pepperoni and salami and all that. I was actually learning some stuff. I'm like, do I want salami now that I know that sodium benzoate? Is. Anyways, okay, uh, focus. Um, anyways, talking to him, go to the checkout aisle. Omar comes next to me and he has his shirt. Like he has an undershirt, okay, and, but he has his work shirt kind of pulled up to let everyone know, leave me alone, especially that pastor over there. But, uh, you know, I'm kidding. But he, I come up to him, I'm like, man, Omar, um, good, good, to see, good, really good to meet you. Um, and hey, I'd, I'd love to invite. So I give him a cross view card, an invite card. And rarely does this happen. But he actually, he looks at it with a lot of interest. He asks some questions like, what is that? I was like, oh, that's the website. And he's like, oh, okay. Well, I, I go to a mosque, but thank you. And he, he gives it to me. You could tell like very, uh, and then he goes and he sits down. No, he buys a candy bar. He buys one thing. He buys a candy bar and he goes and he sits down and I get in my car and I'm thinking I'm driving. Okay. And then I just start weeping when I, when I start thinking about like this guy reminded me of my nine-year-old son. He had just so much like, um, he like was so interested, like so friendly so loving, and we just kind of compartmentalize, oh, that's a refugee, or that's, you know, what, and it's like, no, that's a person that needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, and do we care? Do we care enough to, to, to see the needs in our city, and, and, or are we just like, oh, okay, yeah, moving on, driving home, I got what I needed, I got the salami, or whatever, or are we like, man, Lord, what do you want to do with my heart? And I want to tell you, like me, weeping for him was not me. You don't have a, like, oh, Pastor Josh, he's such a neat guy. It was the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, alive in me, not me. For a long time, I didn't cry. For a long time, it's like, oh, well, should I have, you know, maybe given him a ride or should, you know, oh, and Omar. And, and all of a sudden, like, the Lord overwhelmed me and opened the eyes of my heart to more than just what was in front of me. Okay, so we have to have a heart for the city um, and, and for the needs and I don't, I mean, Omar, I, I don't know where he's at, like how hungry, how, how, what, how, what his situation is, but there's people that are hungry. And James 2 and verse 15 through 17, Nehemiah, I guarantee, again, he didn't have the, the New Testament yet. You need to know this. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. I remember hearing that in seminary, just going, man, that's so good. I'll say it again. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Like, Nehemiah didn't have the book of James yet. He had faith in the Messiah that would come. He didn't know his name was Jesus Christ, right? But you better believe he had faith in the blood. He had faith in the one that would suffer and die and be the Messiah, and you better believe he would, he would have loved, he would have made, if he was doing this building project, he would have made t-shirts with this Bible verse on here. Look at it. If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warm and filled. Now, come on. Without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead.